Today we are taking a look at the Tycom L9000 Robotic Vacuum Cleaner. Inside this video, we are going to unbox this vacuum, set it up step by step, test out the smart app controls, the mapping function, and the navigation, as well as talk about why this is worth buying. By the end of this video, you're going to have a comprehensive review of this vacuum to know whether or not it's right for you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing. This is going to be everything included in the box, starting with a detailed laminated quick start guide. Next, we have a user manual and a cleaning brush. Underneath this foam, we have the robot vacuum itself, along with the home base here. This is where it's going to go back to charge, and paired with that is going to be the charger. Then, of course, this is what the robot vacuum looks like. Pretty standard and typical for a robot vacuum. Then we have a rag and some spare parts for the vacuum. This is going to be the mop head. And then we have additional spare parts for the vacuum. Now, before we set this up, I must say that I was sent this by Tycon to review inside this video. However, all my thoughts and opinions are my own. With that being said, let's set up this vacuum and test it out. Before our first use, we have these little white foam pads. There's gonna be three of them. You just have to remove them before setting it up. We're going to have two color-coded sweeping arms that we have to install. Red is going to be for left and green is gonna be for right. They're really simple to install. You just press them into the square slots. When they click, they're installed and now we're ready to plug this vacuum in. We have the base plugged into the wall and we have have the robot ready to go. So it's most likely gonna be out of charge on your first use. So you wanna make sure to charge it up. We have two contact points here. We just line those up with the charging base just like so, and it should start charging right away. You'll know that it's charging by the flashing blue LEDs. Whenever this is solid blue, it'll be fully charged, and when it's at red, that's gonna be low battery. As far as buttons and indicator lights go, we're gonna have three of them. We have a Wi-Fi, a power, and a home button. That Wi-Fi, when it's flashing, just means that it needs to be connected to the app. The power button is obviously going to turn on or turn off the vacuum, and if you quickly hit it, it will start or stop cleaning. And the home button is only gonna be used for getting the robot back to the home base. And the home button, when you press it, is going to notify the robot that it needs to go back to the charging base. Before connecting to the app, we need to reset the Wi-Fi by pressing and holding down on these two buttons for three seconds. Wi-Fi reset, ready for Wi-Fi connection. After the voice prompt, then we can use the Tua Smart App to connect the vacuum to the app to start using the smart controls. Once you create an account on the app, you just click on add device, hit continue, and then you'll see the robot in the top left. After you hear the voice prompt, just click on done. Because this is our first time connecting it to the app, we're going to have to do a house map. Once we do a house map, it will unlock all of these other features. But for now, all we have here is the house mapping button and the battery percentage. Now that the vacuum is charged, let's go ahead and click on this button here and start mapping. It's going to show you the map in real time, and we're starting with mapping out my office here. Using that 360 LiDAR navigation, you'll notice that it already mapped the entire office and it didn't even have to go around it. So now it is moving out into the hallway and we'll keep a look at this in real time. So it is detecting the bathroom using that navigation and it is currently moving down the hallway. We have quite an open design down here in our basement and it is recognizing that step by step as it goes around and detects the walls and the rooms in the basement. It's now moving into the largest room of our basement. That's gonna be this living area down here and it's mapping it out perfectly. It'll also keep track of the cleaning time as well as as the cleaning area and the battery percentage while it is mapping. Once it finished mapping out the basement, you'll notice that it actually divided it up into different zones. And now it's going through and cleaning, starting with the edges, and it'll show you every spot that it cleaned. It looked like it started in the bathroom, and now it's working its way back into the office. Before it cleans the entire basement, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button here to have it recharge, and then we will set up different mapping zones and rooms that would be off limits for the robot vacuum. There are a lot of different smart control options that you have access to inside of this app. Some of the basic ones are going to be the smart cleaning button 
here. The spot cleaning where you highlight a certain area that you need cleaned and then you hit go and it will clean a 1.6 meter area around that specific spot. Then we can actually select these different rooms here and clean only a specific room if there was a mess in that room. Next we can actually draw a zone so I can click on that and I can add a cleaning area and draw a specific zone and the robot will only clean that zone. Probably one of my favorite features about this app has to be the map editing because once you go in here you can really make detailed edits to your map dividing up rooms renaming them or telling the robot exactly what places to go and where not to go. So the first thing that we will do here is we will split up a room and we're going to select this room here and the reason I'm splitting this up is because this right here is the bathroom and eventually I want to make that a no-go area simply because of water from the shower. So you just draw this line here and after you're done you hit split and that will create a new room. After you've done that you can click on room rename we'll click on this room here we want to call this the bathroom because that's what it is hit on confirm but then more than that we actually don't want the robot vacuum to go into there so what we will do is hit restricted zone and we want to create a restricted zone around this bathroom and we want to make it a no-go zone so I will just simply drag this no-go zone over here and then I will realign it to where it fits perfectly in this bathroom bathroom area. You have to make sure it's not too close to the charging area, but we did a pretty good job and now it won't go into that zone there or clean inside the bathroom. After we've done that, we just click on save. Now I also want to add some no mop zones because there are areas of our basement that contain only carpet. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is click on a no mop zone. I'm going to drag it over here and we'll stretch this out for this entire room. So this entire room right here is carpet. That's our living room, and we don't want the robot to ever mop in that room, but this is our laundry area here, and that is okay for mopping. So I'll just click on save, and now we have a new no mop zone. Beyond that, we can do a few more things, such as a cleaning order. So if I want to make sure to clean this area first because this is the only mop area, I will click on that one, and then we'll just have this one be number two, and then we'll have this one be number three, and then I'll click on save. Another great section to this app is going to be the customized cleaning section. So I can click on this area here where I know that mopping will be a significant part of the cleaning process. So I will go ahead and keep suction at medium, and I want to have mopping at high and we only want to clean that one time, but you can change it to clean it twice. After that, I hit confirm and it's saved. And if ever you don't like any of the edits that you made, you can click on the reset button and it will wipe away all of those edits. We have even more smart controls here in the more settings option. You can go into manual cleaning where if you use these buttons, it will direct the robot in the specific way that you click. We also have map management here where we can reset the map and have it redraw it. Next we have seek robot, which it will find the robot wherever it's at in your house. Then we get into some smart options like scheduled cleaning where I can add a scheduled cleaning and we can have that specific cleaning schedule repeat daily or only on certain days of the week. And you can even tell it what kind of cleaning you want. You could either do select room cleaning or whole house cleaning. Besides that, we can set our suction level. We can set our mopping water. We can resume the cleaning, set customized cleaning, change the voice language or volume, and even take a look at our cleaning records, how long it's cleaned, and how much area it's covered. Lastly, at the bottom, you're going to see your cleaning status. And this is where it's going to tell you whether whether or not you have the mop cloth holder installed and what type of cleaning mode you're currently on. So you could do sweep or you could do sweep and mop or you could do mop only. Speaking of mopping, let's go ahead and install the mop accessory and test out the mopping function. Before mopping, we take the dustbin and water container here and we fill it up with water. There's a little water inlet valve and you just fill it to the top and then put it back. Next, we take the mop attachment here and we just install it. It clicks into place and it's ready to start sweeping and mopping. Because I already set up the mopping functions and which rooms to mop and which ones to not, we will go ahead and start the mopping process by clicking on the power button. So it will start by sweeping first and then it will follow that by mopping. So we'll let it get done with sweeping and I'll film the mopping portion. As it sweeps, you'll notice that it leaves a mopping residue. So it sweeps 
and then mops immediately. And it doesn't leave that much of a wet residue on the hardwood floor, but it seems to be doing a great job of removing the dirt and then mopping. Just to give you an example, this is what the floor looks like before the sweeping and the mopping. And this is what it looks like after it's done sweeping and mopping. So you notice that all of that dirt that was here is gone and the floor is pretty well mopped. When you're finished cleaning to empty out the robotic vacuum, you just remove this piece here. This is gonna contain both the water and the dustbin, which sits right here. All you have to do is just simply dump this in the trash. On top of that, you can also remove this Velcro cloth here and throw it into the wash and install the spare that they give you. So now that we have tested out both the sweeping function, the mop function, and we've gone over all of the smart app control, it's time to answer the question, is this robotic vacuum by Tycom worth it? And before I answer that question, I wanna go over some of my favorite things about this machine, as well as some of the things I didn't like. First and most importantly, I thought it did a great job of both sweeping and mop. In this footage, you can tell that there was quite a bit of dirt and gunk on the floor. And then after I went ahead and ran the sweeping function as well as the mopping function, the floor looked 10 times better. I also really enjoyed the Smart App. I felt like there was many functions in there that allowed me to really customize this to my house and control where the vacuum went and where it mopped, where it didn't mop, and where the different rooms were. That was extremely helpful and it allowed me to create an experience that just worked for our basement. There's only really a couple of things that I didn't like about this and they aren't really that big of a deal. One of those has to be that the battery percentage seemed to drop a little bit faster than I thought it would. However, it would be able to clean this entire basement, which is about 1300 square feet without losing the entire battery. So that is a huge plus, but I do think that with larger homes, this may run out of battery before it cleans the entire surface. The other thing that gave me trouble was that I couldn't create a no mop zone or a no sweeping zone around the area of the charging port. That just made it a little bit difficult to create my rooms and my no mop zones and it limited where I could put the charger. But after I moved the charger to a place that would allow both sweeping and mopping, then it solved that issue. Which brings me to my conclusion that this L9000 robotic vacuum by Tycom is worth buying. If you're looking for a smart vacuum that doesn't break the bank, that has that smart mapping control, as well as great suction power and mopping capabilities, then this one's it. It performed way better than I expected and the app really does allow you to customize the cleaning experience for your home. Overall, this is a solid robotic vacuum that I could recommend to anybody looking for a new smart vacuum. It's gonna get the job done and go beyond that. So in my personal recommendation, it's worth it. Thank you so much for watching this video review and I hope that it helps. My name's David and if you're into more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. I do home and outdoor product reviews, product comparisons, and top five best videos. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure to stick around for when I release my next video.